everyone, my name is Katie and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be discussing what I want to read in November. Before we get started, I do want to take a chance to talk about this really cool product that I was sent. So I'm going to open it up here. Uh, since I recently moved, I've been looking for lots of decorations to put in my apartment. And so when Mapafu reached out to me and asked if I wanted to unbox a print on my channel, I said, of course, because I just think their prints are so cool. You can go on their website and select any sort of print. You can do maps, you can do star maps, you can do anything based on fictional places. You can do like um, art prints that come over really, really cool. And so for my map, I decided to create, wow, it's really big, <laughs> um, a map of the night sky on the night that my boyfriend and I started dating and I have our Long Island because that is where the night sky is and the date and the coordinates. If you are interested in a mappable product of your own, please check out the link in the description. Thank you so much to Mapful for sending this my way and if you're interested, definitely, definitely check them out. Okay, so November. I feel like September and October was such a crazy time for releases and now things are finally chilling out on the new releases a little bit and I have time to catch up. There's so many new books that have come out that I've not gotten a chance to read just because of life and because when things are coming out like so, so crazy, uh, one after the other, I don't have time to read all of them. But now I feel like November and December are some times to chill before the 2021 releases start. Even though there are some books coming out in November and December that I am excited for, you can check out my Fall Fantasy releases video that I posted uh, about a month or two ago if you are interested to hear about those books. But yes, I can catch up, catch a breath, and read some books that I've been really looking forward to for a while now. Okay. So the first book that I want to read in November is Restless Slumber by K.J. Sutton, which is the sequel to Fortuna Sworn by K.J. Sutton. This is a book that I originally picked up on my Kindle and then I was just reading it and really enjoying it. So I purchased the paperback copy. It is a self-published book, I'm pretty sure, or from Once Upon a Time books. Maybe that's a small imprint. I'm not quite sure. But it was, there's so many like adult fantasy romances on Kindle Unlimited or like Kindle that you can find um, that usually have some sort of print version that's like a self-published book. And so I've been kind of like trying to find more in that little niche. And as I enjoy the books, I've been purchasing them um, in physical copies, obviously because I want them on my shelves if I really love them. And I really, really love this one. And so this is the sequel. I literally finished this one yesterday and I want to start this immediately. So that's how I feel about it. And I de I'm going to definitely have a video coming up in the near future about all the adult fantasy romances that are catching my eye and some that I want to read and share that with you because I've been doing a lot of, lot of research on this um, just because I'm really interested in it. It's like adult fantasy and paranormal romances. So keep an eye out for that in the near future. Fortuna Sworn is the last of her kind. She is a nightmare. With just a single touch, she can know anyone's fears and weave an illusion around them built out of their greatest terrors. She is powerful, but she is completely alone. After her brother disappeared two years ago, she was left alone with no family. She hides and blends in with the humans, working at a bar by day and searching for her brother at night. When she's captured by a goblin, she catches the eye of a very powerful fairy who offers her an irresistible bargain. Fortuna reluctantly leaves her existence behind and steps into the world of creatures and power. But it soon becomes clear that she may not have bargained with with her heart but with her very life. I mean this book was just so so good when I read it um, which I just read it and it's a dark fae adult romance and I think that it's set up to be really interesting. I really like the concept of being a nightmare and the fact that her powers are really cool because she can just touch someone and make them feel their greatest fears and some of the illusions that she weaves are really crazy. Um, I really enjoy the slow burn romance aspect of this book and I'm really looking forward to reading this sequel. As you can see, she looks so badass on the cover. This is the quote on the back, obviously, because I can't tell you about the synopsis of this because 
it would be a spoiler, but this quote I think is good. Before I met you, I thought nightmares were creatures of pain and darkness. Why then are you constantly seeking freedom and light? So, yes, um, obviously this cover art, so, so gorgeous. This is a series that I've been seriously falling in love with and I think the third book comes out in December and I am anxiously awaiting it. I will probably try and read it as soon as it comes out because loving the series so, so much. And this next book is a book that I've been anticipating so, so much. I actually just came out, so I'm betting on this pretty fast. And that is Kingdom of the Wicked by Carrie Maniscalco. Last year, the Stalking Jack the Ripper series was one of my absolute favorite series that I read all year. So, of course, um, Carrie Maniscalco is now an auto buy author for me. And I'm going to be buddy reading this with Isabella from <laughs> Throne of Pages who I buddy read the whole Stalking Jack the Ripper series with and I adore her and I'm so so excited to be buddy reading with her again because it was honestly the greatest experience buddy reading that series with her like we just loved all the books so much and so I'm just so excited to be back um, with this author and also with a friend that we experienced this author together and okay so Carrie Maniscalco really writes the tension and romances so well like Audrey Rose and Thomas Cresswell love them and so now I'm excited for whatever new ship she has in this book. So there's two sisters, two sisters, one brutal murder, a quest for vengeance that will unleash hell itself and an intoxicating romance. So Amelia and her sister Victoria are strege, which is that live among the humans. When Victoria shows up in a ditch her body desecrated, Amelia is understandably devastated. She will stop at nothing to find her sister's killer, even if it means using forbidden dark magic. Then Amelia meets Wrath, one of the wicked princes of hell that she has been warned against since she was a child. Wrath claims to be on Amelia's side, tasked with finding Victoria's murderer, but when it comes to the wicked, nothing is as it seems. And there is this really cool island are called the seven oh no this is the seven circles beautiful illustration and on the back the quote is i understood why some thought kissing one of the wicked was addictive each time his tongue touched mine it felt as if the ground quaked beneath me like we were a cataclysmic event that shouldn't be so I want to start this as soon as I can because that just sounds like everything I'm looking for in a book, especially Miss Carrie Maniscalco. Like, I'm so excited. Next up, I will be reading Crave by Tracy Wolf. Tagline Take a Bite. So, if this cover looks familiar, I'm pretty sure the uh, resemblance to Twilight is intentional. And I picked this book up because my friend Kaylee adored this book. She loves all things vampires and I think it's just going to be like a fun vampire, like a little bit cheesy but like the kind of cheesy that I like, vampire romance that has Twilight vibes and I don't really feel like rereading Twilight ever in my life so I feel like this could be a good substitute, something different and it takes place at an academy. So I love like vampire school settings. So I think that it could be really, really just like fun. Grace's whole life changes when she steps into the academy. Nothing seems right about the place and she is a mere mortal among monsters. She doesn't know which faction she belongs to, but she knows that all the other students are united in their hate against her. Then there's Jackson Vega, a vampire with deadly secrets who has not felt any emotions in hundreds of years because he is so completely walled off. But there's something that draws Grace and Jackson together, which could spell death for everyone. Jackson has walled himself off for a reason. And now someone wants to wake the sleeping monster and Grace thinks that she just might be bait. So I don't know, it just sounds fun. I, I don't know, I just, I was eyeing it for so long and then I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna purchase it. And it has really fun chapter titles, which I enjoy. Like, let's see, there is one that I was, Okay, like this one, chapter three, vampire queens are the only ones with a nasty bite. Like it just seems like a little like, what's the word for that like kind of humor? Like, like in your face, campy? Not campy. Regardless, you get the tone from like those spunky little chapter titles. 
after that is a book that I have been looking forward to for so, so long. And that is Lightbringer by Claire Legrand. However, I do actually want to do a reread of Kingsbane before I read Lightbringer because uh, there was so much that happened in this book. I feel like I would really benefit from a reread. However, I reread Freeborn last year before I read Kingsbane, so I don't feel like I need to reread that one, although I adore that book. Um, I, I don't know, maybe I should read just like all three of them in a row. Like that would be really fun to read the whole series at once. Maybe I like should reread it. I don't know. I'm like, I'm going through it right now. I'll, I'll see how I feel. Um, I don't know. I think rereading the whole series could be a great time. Sometimes I get stressed out because there's so many books that I want to read and I just need to take, remind myself to like, take a breath and just read what you feel like because if you get in that mindset of wanting to read things just for booktube and content like it makes reading less fun anyways so this series i feel like this trilogy like this last book might break me oh i love this i love the series so much so okay so <laughs> maybe i'll be reading all three of these maybe 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 um so I guess, let me talk about Furyborn. So the tagline is, the gate will fall. You will know this time by the rise of two human queens, one of blood and one of light. Two queens will rise. They will carry the power of the seven. They will carry your fate in their hands. So this story follows two young women living centuries apart. There is Riel who risks everything when assassins try to kill her best friend, the crown prince, and thus she exposes that she has all seven elemental powers. Usually people are only born with one. This means that she is the prophesized sun queen or blood queen. And because she has publicly exposed her abilities, she is put through these seven trials to show her mastery of all of these elements. A thousand years later, the legend of Queen Riel is just that, a legend. Eliana Farakora lives under the reign of the Undying Empire and is a bounty hunter, thinking that if she provides the Empire with their bounties, they, they will leave her family alone. However, when her mother is taken captive, by the Empire, Eliana realizes that no one is truly safe and she joins up with a rebel captain in the journey to try and reunite her family. As Eliana and Riel fight in a cosmic war that spans millennia, their stories interact with shocking connections between the two of them. I don't know, like, I've read this book twice and each time I've loved it and when I read Kingsbane last year, I have never cried reading a book from a plot twist. Like, I don't usually cry, like, I cry sometimes reading books, but like, not a lot, but like, I was so shocked and destroyed by the plot twist in this book that I shed tears. I like I can tell you that has never happened to me before and it has not happened to me since. So I obviously have a lot of feelings towards this book and I just really love this year. Okay. Maybe I'll be rereading Freeborn too because because I have all these feels. And like, can we just discuss the Lightbringer cover? Like, she's beautiful. She's beautiful. Like, I have been looking forward to this. Like, the amount of, like, stuff that goes into this series just makes it so cool and, like, so intricate. And it has, like, all these elements that just... Chef's kiss beautiful. I don't know. I don't know what else to say, man, except for the fact that I'm in love with it. So, yes. All right, well, I unexpectedly added some books to my TBR mid-filming, so that was fun. And I do have one last book that I wanted to add on my, to my TBR. So I have been reading on my Kindle, which I just had to get a brand new one because my dog ate my Kindle. But you know what? We're good to go. I have a new one now, so it's okay. Um, so because at work, I've been socially distancing at lunch. I like, you know, used to sit with coworkers and stuff and I was at work and chat, but uh, that is not really a thing anymore. So when I have to go in to work and I eat lunch alone, <laughs> I will read on my Kindle. So I was looking through my neck alley and like of all the books that I have arcs of that I could read on my Kindle and one that really stood out to me that I really want to read is The Initial Insult by Mindy McGuinness. I read Female of the Species by Mindy McGuinness a year or two ago and it was phenomenal. Like just such great insight and commentary but like also just really great pacing and when I read the synopsis of this book I was like 
yes, I need to read this immediately. And it actually doesn't come out until February 23rd. So welcome to Amon Tilado, sorry, Ohio, where your last name is worth more than money and secrets can be kept for a price. So Tress Montour was known for her family name up until seven years ago when her entire family disappeared. Now she lived with her one-eyed grandpa in this place known as the White Trash Zoo where wild animals roam around. Felicity Ternando has it all. Looks, money, and a secret so deep that one misstep could send her tumbling down the social ladder. She has done everything in her power to make people forget that she was there the night seven years ago when the Montours disappeared. Felicity has buried the secret so deep that she cannot even remember it, except she knows when she looks at Tress, she has a panic attack. But she'll have to remember, Tress has a plan. The opportunity presents itself at a Halloween party in an abandoned house. Tress wants to pry the truth from Felicity, brick by brick, as she slowly seals her former best friend in a coal chute until she tells the truth. I mean, like, and it's an Edgar Allan Poe retelling and it's a duology so i think that that's going to be so intense and so interesting i'm just like i'm into it i'm gonna start reading when i can because that just sounds phenomenal and minnie mcginnis is a phenomenal author and so there you have it that is what i have in store for november there's still so many more books that i want to read but sometimes you need to take your tell yourself to take a breath and like it's okay you can read what you want when you want, you know? But I do love setting up these TBRs because it just makes me really excited for what I'm feeling at the moment to be reading in the future. So please let me know what you think of these books down below. If you're reading any of the same books in November, if not, like what you plan on reading in November, um, and feel free to drop a little heart emoji in the comments if you watched this far and enjoyed this video. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Have some fun, read some books, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.